Are you tired of the same outdated, regurgitated listing presentation ideas that lack authenticity and insight? We're in the right place. As you know, the amount of generic, fluffy content floating around the internet on listing presentations is absolute craziness. Have you lost your mind? So the scripts that we're gonna dig into today are the ones that I've used to become a top producing real estate agent over the past decade. And yes, you don't wanna recreate the wheel, but you also don't wanna look and feel and smell like everybody else in the marketplace when you're competing. So stick around right to the end because we're gonna cover exactly why the listing presentation is often one before you even get to the door. We're gonna dissect what works, what's outdated in Mike Ferry's listing presentation, but most importantly, we're gonna dive into the psychology behind it, understanding why these strategies and more importantly, how to make them work for you so that it is personalized. Let's dig into it. Now, one of the most important parts of a listing presentation is actually the pre-qualification leading up to this. And without doing that, it's very common to not even really fully understand and realize whether or not you're on a listing presentation. So when you show up, sometimes what I've seen happen is you are not prepared and you're in a full blown competing listing presentation scenario and you drop the ball just because you weren't prepared or if you're overly prepared and you didn't know what the scenario and situation was and the seller who's not ready was just wanting to check on price and now they feel like they're getting pitched when they're not really necessarily in the market yet. And either of those scenarios is totally okay, but you need to know when where you stand when you're going into a conversation with the seller. So here what we see in this one minute listing presentation that Mike Ferry has put out here is essentially for people you've already determined that they know, like, and trust you. They more than likely want to hire you. It's essentially following up and following through on those just list me calls and making sure that you do it in a timely fashion, in a timely manner after you've pre-qualified. So let's look at this first question, first statement. Hi, thanks again for having me over. I'm excited about getting your home on the market and getting it sold. Now, as a newer agent, I used to always use that line. And what I really liked about that was it gave me confidence, first of all, to say something you know, cheerful, but also it sort of sets the, sets the stage, at least subconsciously, but also you've communicated that to the seller. Now, of course, if you've set this up appropriately, then it's more or less assumed. But the more that you practice this, the more it rolls off the tongue and the more ex experienced you become, the less that you might be in formal listing presentation scenarios. And then because you've practiced a lot of this, it will, it will naturally flow in every interaction that you have with buyers and sellers. So next is, do you mind if I take a quick look at your home? Now this question is positioned to put you as the authority so that you're not having them show you through the home and upselling their home as they take you through essentially. You quickly look through the home, you preview it from the eyes of the buyer and then you meet them at the kitchen table as they have time to look through your listing presentation documents on specifically what it is that you do to sell a home. That way you kind of kill two birds with one stone in a perfect world scenario, of course. And then it's, I wrote down three real important questions that I have for you, can I ask you now? Number one, do you absolutely need to sell your home? Now you're just confirming the motivation. Number two, do you wanna price your home to sell or leave it on the market a long time? So you're establishing, explaining to them the risk of whether they price it too high. And then number three, do you want me to handle the sale for you? And the reason why it's laid out in three questions so simply, quickly, and easily like this is because if everything else is already set up, do you really need it to be any more complicated than this? The answer, of course, is no. So the rest of this is more or less a guideline. And so it even states in here, these people, they know you, they want to hire you and they will list at your price. So this is your come list me call. Now, the next part of what you see here in the script is designed specifically for more of a typical listing presentation. So number four here says, Bob, at the end of my presentation tonight, one of three things will happen. Number one, you might decide to hire me. Number two, you might decide not to hire me. And number three, I might decide not to take your listing. And just so that you know, any one of those three is totally fine, is totally okay. Now you can put that in your own words. You could say, hey, you know, we might work together, we might not work together, and totally okay either way. I just wanna make sure that you have all the information details that you need. I wanna be here to help you no matter what happens. What's most important is what's best for your family, etc. So you can kind of work on that as you, you know, 
hone your skills and your craft over time to make it your own. But number five, let's quickly take a moment to review the questions I asked you over the phone. You said you were moving to Albuquerque, right? And you said you were moving because of a job transfer. So again, you're reiterating that motivation and you're also emphasizing the fact that you've taken the time, care and attention to understand what their situation is before you even dig into the details because what's in it for them, what's important to them. You said you had to be there by within the next couple months, right? And that's an opportunity, by the way, for you to dig into how long it might take to sell a house because people sometimes delay getting on that appointment or having that conversation with an agent thinking, well, I'm not ready to sell my house yet. But when they actually look at the calendar, even if things sell and go quickly and smoothly, perfectly within the first week on the market, it could take 60 days for them to actually have possession take place on their house after two weeks for contingency, a week and a half or a month and a half for uh, possession thereafter. Do you want to price, you want it to price your home at X, Y, Z? Because maybe you, you talked a little bit about that. You, they came out and told you that when you did the pre-qualification and try not to let it go too much into a rabbit hole because you, you do have a little bit more that you want to cover, but you also want this to be conversational. I think one of the biggest problems with scripts is the fact that if you don't know the scripts very well, then what ends up happening is that you're so worried about what to say next that you, you don't let the improv part of the conversation take place and or it could go the other way where you're just like I'm really good with people and you know I'm a naturally good salesperson you're extroverted let's say and you're comfortable with people but if you don't have a guideline and a script of what to say when to say how to say where to say what's next then what easily happens is that the conversation gets derailed and you don't get to the conclusion or the solution that you want and an hour goes by and I've even heard scenarios where three hours go by and they end up having to leave they don't get the listing and it's like so now every time I know I have this agent over at my house it's I don't have time for that so the key is to make sure it's structured and to get through all of what you need to in the time that you need to but there's going to be a conversation taking place between and through all of this so when you talk about the price that you might actually dig right into the CMA to a certain point, but then you might sort of backtrack and make sure that you don't miss some of these points, or you might do a quick overview on the CMA and say, well, we'll dig into it a little bit in just a second, but I just wanted to confirm that really quick. And you said that you owe how much you have left on the property. And again, you can say we can dig into further detail, you know, for what you're going to net in your pocket after the sale. Um, once we dig further into price and you were not planning on selling it yourself, were you terrific? Now, if it's, if you're going on an appointment with a for sale by owner, obviously you, you wouldn't ask that question because they'd already thought about it and they probably have you at the table because they realize it's not working as well as they thought it might. And you did want your money out of the property, right? You're not looking at doing any creative financing. And now with interest rates changing, there might be a little bit, you know, unique ways that you can position that, but more than likely that's usually not the case. People want to cash in. Number six, now there's only two issues we need to look at tonight. Number one, your motivation to sell this home. And number two, the price we set on your home. So I always say this, the higher the motivation, the lower the price, the, the lower the motivation, the higher the price. So you just, and, you, and again, you could say this in your own words and just say, okay, so you guys did mention you absolutely want to sell. And I know that price is one of the biggest factors. I always like to price homes at a place where we feel confident we're not leaving money on the table, um, but we can dig further into the highest price that we could possibly justifiably charge, making sure it's still within the market and will get you what you want in the time you want that will get you to the location you said you were going to move to Albuquerque, make sure that we make that happen on time. Because of course, as you know, there's risks to pricing it too high. We don't want to chase the market, especially with, with what's half happening in the market right now. Seven, I've prepared what we call a comparative market analysis. Now there's two parts to this research. Part one, we call fantasy land, what homeowners list their homes for. And part two, we call reality, what real estate agents list and sell homes for. So we're gonna have to decide tonight where are you going to spend your time now again you could say that in your own words you could say something along the lines of like you know hey i realize that you're probably up to speed with what's happening on the market in terms of what you as the general public can see when you're out shopping for houses online and again especially if it's a for sale by owner they're going to say yeah we saw what all the other houses were listed for and we decided to go higher because ours is nicer right but the fact is 
what real estate agents list and sell homes for. And I take it one step further, and I will also say that even these comparables, even the market statistics are yesterday's news. This is what happened yesterday, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, six weeks ago. We can also make adjustments from that point till today. And that's the reason why I went out and previewed all of the competing listings before I even came on this appointment. So that when we're talking about 123 Main Street, I've actually been in there and I've seen the reason why maybe it's been on the market for a long time. Your house doesn't have that issue. So maybe it's not overly a concern, but we can use all of this as benchmark and then we're supposed to read between the lines and that's why you've hired a professional like myself who can see what you don't see on paper who also has the experience and the wherewithal to be able to guide you and you know through reading between the lines and sometimes there, there's not always accurate comparables number eight the purpose of the comparative market analysis is to determine the value of your home in the eyes of the buyer do you know how buyers determine value so you always want to position your conversation towards this is how the buyers see things and that's why whenever i give feedback you always have to be very subtle and soft if you are to say something you know that's potentially problematic about their home that could potentially be perceived as something negative with their home it, it's accurate feedback that can number one help them present better maybe there's something that very minor that you could do to update or upgrade or fix or stage to show the house better, but it's your ability to have those difficult conversations with the right amount of tact to make sure that you don't insult them, but you also communicate the truth to them because they might not want to hear the truth, but they do need to hear the truth. And of course, as you're going through this listing presentation, what you'll also realize is that they will be giving you objections. And in a perfect world scenario, I personally believe that you want them to be giving you objections because if you're going start to finish through your entire listing presentation, you don't get any objections from them, which by the way, can sometimes be common from the amiable personality. They need to feel like you care about them and their personal situation. They want to know that you can hold their hand through the entire process. And so when you're going through this, you need to make sure that you're engaging with them. If, if the body language is a little bit leaning back and they're they're not giving you that engagement, then you also realize maybe they've disconnected. Or if you've recognized something between husband and wife where, you know, she's engaged, he's not, or vice versa, maybe you want to, you know, re-engage. And that's the improv part of this that you never really do learn from a script that you need to make sure that you touch on when you're going through these scripts, especially when you're getting started. Number nine, buyers determine value by comparison shopping. They look at the price of your home based on its features and benefits and compare it with the features and benefits of similar homes that have recently sold or are currently on the market. Does that make sense? So buyers are gonna look at what's for sale or what is recently sold. A good agent is always gonna take a buyer through a comparative market analysis similar to what we're about to do and here's what they're gonna see. Here's what they're gonna see when they're looking. So when I present the comparative market analysis and I look at actives and solds, I'm always looking for a way to justify the best price possible. And I'm always looking for who is the ideal buyer for this home. And I'm selling that vision to the seller when we have that conversation. And I say, this is the reason why it needs to be positioned as such. And here's how the buyer's agent is going to see this comparative market evaluation the same way we're looking at it i want you to know how the buyer's agent is going to present this exact same cma to their buyer and i want you to know how i can use this information to your advantage and how we can position your home accordingly so that we can have an advantage in the marketplace number 10 for example if you were going to purchase a car one dealership had a car for twenty thousand dollars and another dealership had a car for $20,000, but at a CD player and fancy rims, which car would be more valuable and why? So this is sort of to draw out the fact of the sentimental value because sellers will sometimes say things that are ridiculous like, yeah, but I saw that house, they might have a, you know, they might have air conditioning, they might have, you know, upgraded this, that or whatever, but I know those neighbors and they didn't take as good of care of their home as we did and we vacuum the carpets every single day, you know, things. And so the, the key to this is you're trying to draw out that sentimental value to instill logic in the mind of the seller so they realize yes okay so that house is almost identical to ours but had extra benefits but here's another key component to that that house was on the market and is now sold how many houses are now for sale that house is no longer active that house is now sold but here's what's important we can price our home maybe similar to that one even considering it has sold but what happens if one or two or three properties pop up just like it 
and they end up undercutting it and now we're chasing the market because we've inflated our price considering there's no other listings for sale it didn't sell now we got undercut and we're the ones left with the bag we're still for sale everybody else is sold and they came on the market after us especially if it's a townhouse or a condo or a row house that that could likely happen i've seen it happen so many times and again, that's speaking from experience, but it's important to relay that, and this is a perfect time to do that in the conversation. Number 11, what if the first dealership put the car with no CD player and rims on sale for 5,000 less, which would be a better value then? So now you're trying to sort of show the obvious. It's either price or more benefits for the same price, which I guess is number 12, the next part of the script. Either we lower the price or we have more features and benefits for the same price. Does that make sense? So when I'm going through this, I always say, okay, and sometimes I even use my laptop. I don't necessarily have three comparables like what they will sometimes say in this in, in this particular script, they say to have three, not too many comparables, but I just pull up the laptop and I go, let's look at price range. Here's where we know we fit in this price range. And I'll flip through the listings. Boom, 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 whoa. This one absolutely kicks the crap out of us. So we can't go head to head with this. Boom, 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 boom. Whoa, we ab absolutely kicked the crap out of this one. So we know that we are in here. Boom, let's get rid of the rest. And let's look in fine tooth detail what these have, what these ones don't have. Well, geez, this one was six months ago already. So that's a bit of a different market. We can adjust for this, adjust for that based on that. And then we look at the next one and say, well, okay, this one's bigger, but it's older and outdated. Doesn't have the upgrades that yours has. Maybe that's a wash. Maybe we can adjust for this, adjust for that. This one is actually probably the closest comparable. However, it had this, 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 and this, or this is the closest comparable, although yours has this, 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 this on top of it as an example. And then you can kind of look at from multiple different angles. Well, okay, considering this one, considering that one, and then boom, again, what is currently for sale today? And if there is a couple few properties that are for sale, maybe it's worthwhile to actually, or you can suggest and say that you've, or you can go ahead and, and do this activity to inquire on the properties that are currently actively for sale, especially when it's a super active hot market, because then you can find out, is this property still for sale or is it sold? Because there might be three properties that would compete with yours, but when you inquire, all three of those are conditionally sold. And if you've been in to preview all three of those properties and you know exactly how this property compares to those, then you are in the driver's seat and you are in a winning perspective and position when it comes to making sure that you are valued correctly on the market. 13, so unless you are planning to add more features and benefits to your home, are you? So price is the only issue. Can I show you what I mean? And if they were planning to put more upgrades to the property, you might say, here's some basic few things that we can do to get the property ready for sale within a reasonable time frame, considering we still wanna get on the market and sold by such of date. So if it's basic cleaning, basic staging, basic upgrades and repairs, that's fine. But if they do say, well, hey, you know, should we renovate the kitchen? It says, well, let's look at the pros and cons of doing that. You know, do you have the time to do that? Do you have the wherewithal to do that? And is that in line with your goals and timelines? Right, and so it might be an objection, it might be a stall. You don't wanna let that hinder the process if they are ready to get the ball rolling absolutely today. But that is likely something that you would have found out in conversation during the pre-qualification as well. So 13A, this home is just like yours. I'd kind of mentioned some of how this conversation goes. How many beds, how many baths, how many square feet? Uh, do you know this neighborhood? Have you seen this house? And so when I, I love going through the CMA on my laptop or even just verbally spitting out information as I kind of go through it. So they know, first of all, in real time, they can see my my experience and expertise in displaying the information to them they also see that I'm not cherry picking any three listings to make their house fit certain way this way or that way and if you can go go through with them in real time the CMA or if let's say you've prepared it ahead of time you can actually go through the CMA with them again after taking it through all of the details you're gonna be able to display how much of a professional you are and, and how much you know what you're talking about because of how quickly you can get through this. If you're newer, obviously you wanna do it in maybe two or three steps. Um, but once you get good at this, that's one way to display your expertise. And I kind of mentioned this house is better, this house is maybe not so good, not as good as yours, et cetera, et cetera. And look at what price they're asking, how long have they been on the market? And you said you need to be in by such time. So how long have they been on the market? That's similar to like, I actually inquired on this property and it's conditionally sold, it's only been on the market seven days. Or hey, this property's been on the market for 45 days and I previewed it and I know why it's been on the market and hasn't sold. But if it's a more of a buyer's market, then you say, hey, look, at this one's been on the market for so long, obviously people aren't buying it at that price. So if we want, if we're similar to that house and we actually wanna sell, 
would you agree that maybe we should suggest something more competitive where you end up being that listing that comes in afterwards and gets sold quicker as per that conversation that I just said before? Which one of those two sellers would you rather be considering what your goals are? 14, what price do you feel that we should use to create value in the eyes of the buyer to get someone to decide to buy your property versus the competition? And I said, well, what do you think, Chris? And I said, well, I have a gut feel in mind, um, but I want to see where you sit first and I'll be able to tell you if that's justifiable or what could potentially be a like, likely result based on my experience and based on my opinion and then work it from there. And then I always tell people that like, as I'd mentioned, I want to list it so that you feel confident that you're not leaving money on the table, but I also want to put you in line to get an offer. And I'd rather have you get your potential for more than one offer than not get any offers at all. Worst case scenario, you get an offer, you can always say no, right? So that's the conversation I have with people. And now that you've seen these prices, I'm gonna recommend a price of such and such. So would you list your home with me for that price tonight? So where, how are you guys feeling about everything? Are you in a position to get the ball rolling or where are you at with things? And actually before asking question number 15, I would probably go into the net sheet first. I would say, okay, well, let's take a look at quickly. Um, or if people say, well, how much is it gonna cost me? Sometimes these questions come up, these not really objections, but these inquiries come up partway through this conversation. And sometimes you just dive right into it and be like, okay, we can get to that in a little bit here. Or we can say, hey, okay, let's take a look at that. So here's what price do you want me to base it on? Because you know we've considered already, maybe we've gone through the comparative market analysis, or if we have it, we said, well, let's look at price first. Let's look at where it fits in the market first, and then let's go from there. And then once we determine that price, or I'll ask them, or maybe they haven't fully come out with price and it's okay, well, let's look at the net sheet for what it might cost you. What price do you want me to base that on? Okay, and then I go through the net sheet with them and then at the end of it, if they, does this number make sense to you? Right, so I, I don't, sometimes I don't always make it about the price of the home. I look at, okay, after you sell it, this is of course based on asking price best case scenario. So I don't wanna, I don't, I don't wanna pull the wool over your eyes in any way, shape or form. The net proceeds figure that we're looking at here based on asking price after commission, there's GST and PST on the commission. You've got your lawyer fees. You know, you might have some moving costs. There might be a payout penalty if you can't port the mortgage, but this is the net equity figure after the sale. This is the goal. This is the best case scenario. If it goes for above asking price, obviously be more. If we get an offer for less than asking price, obviously be less. But does this figure make sense? Is this kind of what you had in your mind? And if they say, yeah, that, that makes sense. I say, great. So are you in a position to get the ball rolling or where are you guys at with things? I'm just checking to see where you're at. And if they say yes, I don't even go right for the signatures. The next thing I do is I say, here's what the process is going to look like with in terms of between now and getting it on the market. And even if they give me a we're not sure, I still go through that. Here's what it would look like if we were to get the property on the market. Photos, sign, lockbox, marketing, open house, etc. You're getting them through that to start, you're, they're visualizing now what it would look and feel like. You're also establishing your professionalism as an agent and so that you continue the conversation and you ask, do you have any further questions? Is there any other, anything else? And so if you get to that point again where they have another objection, which is perfect or another question or concern, you answer that and then maybe after you answer it, you say, cool. So are you thinking in a perfect world, how soon would you like to have it on the market? And then you might plant the seed again and say, well, if it's any, if it's going to be anything further than a week or two weeks from today, then we probably should revisit all of this pricing because the market is changing dramatically from here to there. Every day is different. Never mind one week to the next, we'd have to revisit the pricing on this. A very good chance. And then if you're back and forth on price or question 16, first of all, is all we need to do now is simply sign the contract so that I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? And if you learn how to say that with a smile, people say that would be great. Thank you very much, Chris. And it's funny that it sounds kind of cheesy, but if you get good at it, you know, it can still work for you. And then if they say, no, well, we want more money, you say, okay, well, what price do you absolutely need to have? Ouch. Well, based on that, there's a couple real important questions I need to ask you. Specifically, why do you feel your house is worth $10,000 more than your neighbors? Well, Bob, in today's marketplace, that means you've simply brought your home up to selling standard, right? All homes need carpet to be vacuumed every single week, right? So let me ask you a question. If the buyer wants to buy your home, but they want plan to get rid of the carpet the moment they buy it, how much is it worth then exactly? So just positioning it to, yes, you've done some additional features and benefits to the house. Some of these will affect the, sailing pre the sales price. Some of them won't. And it is nice to have additional upgrades, but there's also what we call a ceiling price on the property for no matter what, it's still gonna be a thousand square foot bungalow. 
no matter what, it's still gonna be an 850 square foot, two bed, two bath condo in River Heights location, whatever. You have to be able to explain and your reasons why what they've done to the property may or may not help their resale. And you might be able to say, well, it'll help the saleability, but not necessarily the price because as soon as you go to 350,000 and more, all of a sudden you go from townhouse to single family home, or you go from, let's say uh, 450, you go from, you know, detached style home to double attached garage style home, or you go from on and on that goes. So you have to understand the market and the price points to be able to deliver that accurately to people as well. So I hope you found value in this video today. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on this video next.